Hello folks, welcome to celloprofessor.com. This is my YouTube channel. My name is Jamie Feist. I teach cello at Central Michigan University. Please like and subscribe. That is very, very helpful. Okay, what are we talking about today? We're talking about motions on the cello. We're talking about movements, different types of movements or motions, how they're initiated, how they are man maintained. All right, so we're going to be talking about active motions, passive motions and related concepts like momentum or inertia and also talk a little bit how gravity plays a role in our movements as well. Now this terminology um, was used by Paul Roland. All right? uh, uh, he was a Hungarian violinist of the 20th century, taught at the University of Illinois, started the String Project there. If you've never seen his DVD video set and you are a string teacher, I highly recommend that you purchase them and watch them. They are well worth it. Okay, they're a little pricey, but I will put a link in the description below if you would like to get those. So Paul Rowland used this terminology, active motion, passive motion. He also talked about swinging motions. I'm not gonna talk really so much about swinging motions today, but I'm gonna be talking about active motion and passive motions. So what is an active motion and what is a passive motion? Well, I happen to have a definition right here, folks. Okay, so this, uh, these terms, all right, are also used in the uh, medical field, all right? So here's the, a definition of an active motion from the Mosby's Medical Dictionary, all right? Here it says, uh, the movement of parts of the body as a result of voluntary effort. Voluntary effort. So, for example, that's an active motion. Hello, folks. I'm waving at you right now. If I flex my fingers, that is an active motion. Or if I extend my wrist that way in that fashion, that's active. If I move my forearm this way, that is an active motion. If I lift my arm, that's an active motion. They're the result of voluntary effort or a direct result of contractions of the muscles in the body. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm not a doctor. Hopefully, I'm defining that correctly. I think it's close enough for our purposes. The same dictionary defines passive movements as the moving, the moving of parts of the body by an outside force. And here's the key word that I'm really interested, the key phrase that I'm really interested in, without voluntary action or resistance by the individual. Without voluntary action or resistance by the individual. So for example, here I am waving my hand actively, here I'm waving my hand passively. You see the difference, right? This is active motion. It's the direct result of contractions in my forearm. I'm flexing my wrist and I'm extending it. All right, actively. Here's passively. I'm, I'm causing my, this passive motion by sort of swinging my arm this way, right? It's an active motion in my upper arm. All right, swivels this way. I'm using rotator cuff muscles and my hand is sort of flopping around. This hand motion is passive. Why? Because it's not really doing any. The forearm muscles are not causing it. It's being caused by a motion in another part of the body, and there's no resistance, right? As the definition was talking about, there's no resistance or voluntary effort here that would cause this to happen. It's a purely passive thing. Passive, right? If you're passive, right, you're, it's just something is happening to you, let's say. Like if, if, if I'm moving, but I'm passive, something else is causing the motion. All right, so that's how we define active and passive motions in strings. And it's particularly important to know how to do this because if you think a, a motion is passive when it's active or active when it's passive, you're going to be practicing it completely differently. And you may get some sort of funky results as, uh, because of it, or you could even maybe hurt yourself. Okay, so you gotta be really careful. So what are some examples of passive motions? Well, I just, I've been in the process of putting up videos, replacing some old ones from like 2008, um, sort of updating them. They look all blurry because people still use um, like, um, you know, the really slow internet on the phone lines, dial up, right? So I'm redoing. So I've just redid one on um, the sautier bow stroke, right? That uses a passive motion in the wrist, like that. Okay, so my forearm moves right and then my wrist is simply relaxed so the active motion in that case and you can watch the video it just went up the active motion is in the forearm right caused by the biceps triceps muscles going like this 
contraction that way, the arm goes that way, contraction it goes that way, made possible by a hinge in the elbow joint there. Now we have another hinge here, right? We have this, this wrist joint here. And active motions and passive motions are always separated by another joint. So that joint then allows a passive motion in my hand. See? I'm not doing it this way. If you want to do it that way, go right ahead. You'll probably get tired, right? These are smaller muscle groups. So a little larger muscle groups. Okay, so again, like it's really helpful. You gotta know what motion you're trying to do. Okay, let me show you some other examples of passive motions. Okay, so and active motions and how they can work together. Vibrato. Look, a lot of cellists, including me, I love to use passive motions in my fingers for vibrato. Can you see that? I know this isn't the most high-tech way to do video here. I'm just moving. I could cut in and all this kind of stuff. There, do you see my finger? Yeah, that's a passive. I'm not, I'm not moving those fingers actively, like bending them. I'm not flexing them or anything. Are you kidding me? I'm not doing that. It's too much effort. Wouldn't work anyway totally passive all right what's the active motion in that case well I've got my forearm moving this way right going up and down and also if in the lower as you get lower in the positions there's some of this too right you can kind of see it you can watch my videos on Do you see the upper arm swiveling like this yeah so you have these different active motions in the upper arm and in the forearm right and then passive motions are always separated by one or more joints from the active motions and then down the line, down the chain, all right, of cause and effect, right, you can start to see some passive motions. And there's one for vibrato. So we have the hand. Look, you don't have to be doing a fast sauté stroke either to have passive motions in your wrist. You can just have them in everyday play. See that? for you so you saw the wrist there also the fingers right I have I have videos on all these on my website if you want to come look at them all right watch my fingers when I bow look at my pinky and my ring finger see him bend look at my first finger it kind of bends and straightens a little yeah different schools of thought on that some schools of thought don't like a lot of passive motion or motions in the hand or wrist I love them so there you go if you don't like them you don't have to do them I use them why what are some advantages to this well number one there's no way to do passive motions and be tense at the same time so they give you very concrete places to practice letting go letting go of the tension I mean I can't I cannot allow these uh, knuckles to move like this if my the extensor side of my forearm is all tight right that's what makes my uh, fingers into two by four fingers right all right I have to release up here to allow them to go let go right look the forearm muscles on the extensor side and the flexor side my forearm cannot be tense all right for my wrist to go the fingers when I change bows, I can't be tense with the finger flexors and extensor muscles in my forearm if those are going to happen. So they actually are very useful all right, for, for practicing tension release. Okay, so there's the first one. The second one is actually passive motions result in less effort in a lot of ways. Let me show you what I mean. Just just watch this for a second. Okay, so if I move, so I have passive motion in my wrist. Watch how much motion there is in my upper arm. Let's say I get rid of those passive motions. And watch how much movement there is in my arm. Of motions. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to use the exact same amount of bow as I can for that, right? But generally speaking, when you have these passive motions, right, as reactions, in 
especially like this. The sautier stroke. I mean, if this is loose enough, you won't have a whole lot of form motion. All right. Um, same with vibrato. Like. I'm using these finger things, right? Now, if I want to pivot with the same amount of vibrato, it seems to me it's a little more, a little more motion. Same, same concept. I think that they, they result in a more efficient playing because number one, you're relaxed, and number two, the active motions don't have to travel as far. There you go. Good. So, what about now gravity? I wanted, oh no, I want to talk about momentum. All right, I want to talk about momentum first. So this is related to movement um, and is related to active and passive motions, particularly the active motions. Now, when I'm moving my bow back and forth, I'm not controlling it the whole time. I noticed years ago um, when I was teaching students, um, the ones that were tense did not utilize momentum well or inertia. Right? What's Newton's law? Objects in motion tend to stay in motion unless an outside force is exerted on them. Something like that. Am I right, physicists? So when I go back and forth, right, I'm, I'm initiating, I'm initiating the movement, right, an active motion, but then I'm kind of letting go a little bit. Why? Because there's a little decay in the sound. Like keeping up, even this little forearm data shape. I'm not controlling the movement the whole time. I'm getting it started. I'm letting the inertia of the motion or the momentum of the motion carry it. And there's probably a little active motion in there to kind of contribute, but it's not purely active the whole time. It's kind of letting go. You know what I mean? Same with shifting, same with every, same with vibrato. Some of you controlling the movement the whole time. You gotta use more inertia, folks. Right? So I'm going up now. You can even use a circular. Can you kind of see a circle in my vibrato? More on that in a future video, alright? You can use circles in vibrato. And that way you can really use momentum. Okay? Um, so there you go. Just I want to encourage you to really think about that. Whether you're shifting, whether you're doing different kinds of bow strokes, you know, or like you know, like the beginning of the um, the Quran from the first suite. All those all those separate bows. I'm not controlling all of this, you know, the whole time I'm playing. I'm getting it started and I'm letting it kind of coast. All right, we also have click and coast. That's what, that's what I call it. Some cellists call it catch and release. I like to have all my students practice this, all parts of the bow. You get the bow started, and then it coasts. Click and coast. Hear the click in the string? Sounds like a K, a consonant. All right, that's very helpful for these kind of bow strokes because those are similar to that. But again, I'm using momentum. It's like all over the place. Think of athletes. Think of athletes. You know, um, you know, they start like, okay, basketball, right? Free throws. Okay, you get it started, and then there's this follow-through that just kind of keeps going. It's momentum. I mean, even before the follow-through, I mean, they get it started. They're not like controlling it the whole time. No, they get it started, and it goes. Think of golf. They're not controlling that act of motion all the time. No, once momentum gets started, they're going to kind of go with it, you know? Um, tennis, right, with the serves or the backswings, volleyball, whatever you want to talk about, baseball, pitching. They're using momentum. You use momentum when you walk around. I'm sure you let things swing, you know? If we controlled the motion all the way through as we walk, you'd probably look a little something like this, you know what I mean? You don't do that. You use momentum as you swing, as you walk, you know? You let limbs swing and from the joints and so on. Okay, so I want to talk about that. And also gravity. Look, um, gravity isn't just to help us get into the string. A lot of people talk about gravity as like, yeah, okay, I'm using gravity to go to go this direction to get a sound and to get the string sound. But you can also use gravity for up bows. For example, I like personally, I like to uh, do up bows and down bows with a little pendulum effect in the elbow. Watch Jacqueline Dupre, find her Elgar Concerto, watch her do the elbow up, elbow down, but on the up bow, see, I'm not controlling that motion the whole time either, I'm just allowing gravity to, right, do its thing, 
my, my, my muscles are just controlling the speed that my arm goes into the frog. Now obviously I go faster. Okay, I'm gonna be using more inertia and more momentum. Right, but gravity's still going to play a role. Let gravity do its thing. You can use gravity with vibrato. This direction, just practice letting your arm fall. Okay, again, this is like a big sweep, a big umbrella topic here, right? So I'm just kind of throwing a lot of stuff at you. And I have videos all throughout the website that, that talk about this stuff. But, you know, this direction for vibrato, you know? Yeah, like I feel it falling when I vibrate. The, the, the arm is being pulled this way by the gravity. Be pulled. Okay, I don't know if, I, if that was correct terminology, physicist. But... So you can use it there anytime we have a motion going down towards the earth, right? All right, we can, for shifting, you know, you know, and even if I'm going this way, I can use inertia anytime we have a motion. That's basically it. I've just found that cellists who have tension issues are trying to control the motion too much all the way through when they could be using inertia and gravity. Do I have anything else? I have these cheat sheets right here. I'm just looking at it. I think I got it all that I wanted to talk about. I'm sure there's something I'll think about later. Oh, I should have talked about that. But I think that's it. So happy practicing, folks. Check out my website, uh, www.celloprofessor.com. Like and subscribe if you haven't done it. Thank you so much. Talk to you later.